Hi, and welcome to Yesy Bear Book Club. Today is just a compilation video of the shorts I made recently of judging tutors harshly. I did a little compilation of the Henry VIII's wives, and this is just a little compilation of the rest I did. There is more coming, I promise. It just takes so long to write them and to think of like creepy fun stuff to say about each and every person in Tudor history. So, until I get round to that, please enjoy this. Guardian Tudors harshly. Henry the Seventh, very Welsh, but more French. He had an uncle daddy. He loved taxes and taxed everyone, was not mourned by many, scared his own shadow would become a pretender to the throne. But the most boring Tudor, who was the most successful at having babies. Harshly, Henry the Eighth. From handsome, athletic, vigorous youth to fat, crippled, impotent tyrant, how absolute power corrupts absolutely. The dude missed his mom so much he married six times. How's that for an audible complex? Pope can't tell him shit. Ashley, Margaret Beaufort, the mystery, quiet, calm, religious woman or power-hungry, money-grubbing matriarch, child bride, child widow, my lady the king's mother, who maybe killed the princes in the tower for her own sake. Thomas Howard, plotter, prevaricator, uncle, Catholic, how did he keep surviving, wife beater, adulterer, father of dead children, married a princess, how is he not executed? Catherine Brandon, oh, was it right that she married her fiancé's father who was old enough to be her grandfather and was happy about it? I ain't saying she a gold digger, but she wanted to be a duchess. Will Summers, he is an enigma. Alison Weir, write his novel, please. Complete survivor. Got the whole way through. One of Henry VIII's only real friends. I want to know what he was thinking. Catherine Gray. Loved animals, but loved Edward Seymour more, and died in prison because of it. The Gray sisters had no luck, because in Tudor times it's all about who you buck. She had two illegitimate children. Jane Gray. Sad and mad for wanting to be martyred. The nine-day queen because the Dudleys were mean. Overbearing parents doomed her. But could you imagine the Puritan country we would have had if she had married Edward the Sixth and they had reigned together? I shudder. Edward the Sixth. The boy tortured and killed his pet parrot and executed two of his uncles. I think England had a lucky escape from Edward's extreme version of Protestantism. An idolized, isolated child, however smart, he would have been a monster with no reign if he had reached his majority. Lucky he died. Mary I, a very damaged woman who had lost most of her teeth by aged 30. She wanted a baby so badly she had two phantom pregnancies and was prepared to martyr herself for her faith as a teenager. Calice was engraved upon her heart, but it should have been the names of all the people she burnt. Elizabeth I, the Virgin Queen, as long as you believe in loopholes, and a loose definition, Gloriana, who let the weather win her wars. A plotting princess and a hypocrite queen, she had the heart and stomach of a concrete elephant. Lee, Bessie Blunt, why has no one written a historical fiction about her? Call it Busty Blonde Bessie, and everyone will buy it, because no one remembers her for anything else. George Boleyn was a rapist and a poisoner who abused his wife so much she condemned him to death. He was his sister's pimp and was definitely not the friendly gay brother committing incest from Philippa Gregory's other Boleyn girl. Thomas Seymour, pervert, plotter, and dog killer, and no good human and low-down piece of shit. Henry 